I want to, you, to give to you, you will find the teaching. Uh, I'm going to do a five minutes of what we do. We did for an hour and 15 minutes Sunday. And I'm saying, Holy Spirit is going to help you. Amen. Holy Spirit is going to help us. Holy Spirit is going to guide us into that what Father has for us. Now for me to say, I will have the help of the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit is called Helper. Okay. Helper, advocate, standby, counselor. But in many of those ways, he will manifest himself to establish the gifts and the fruits in your life. Where the fruit is not the result of your life. The fruit is that with the result of the fruit, you can have a certain life with God. Are you with me? So Holy Spirit, when he's working in my life so that love as a fruit is established, then with that fruit, I walk with God. Driven by love, loving the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, myself. Loving people as I love myself. But for that, I, if I want the help from the Holy Spirit, I need to allow him to work the fruit of love. Then I have the help of the Holy Spirit. It's not just Holy Spirit... As guidance and that's why many times people say it's not easy to learn how to see the Holy Spirit as a person in the Trinity and how to relate to him without easily going just into the concept of fire freshness guidance wind hello so God must help us in that to understand and one thing, if I allow the Holy Spirit, is I must allow Him to work the fruit. I must allow Him to bring patience in my life. You pray that the Holy Spirit must help you. Now what's going to happen? He's going to teach you patience. <laughs> but that's something else. You believe that's the devil just bringing temptation for me. Now I stand against the devil about this and I must work for patience. But I'm asking the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But that what is happening there was the guidance of the Spirit that's trying to work in patience so that through patience I just will know where to go and how to go. Are you with me? May God help us to put the dots together <laughs> in the right way, in the right way. Guys, so in a very, very shortish way, you know the first one, uh, vitality, stability, quality. <sighs> And I, you can find another thousand words. I've written ten, I've written down nine. But the Holy Spirit will give you another twenty or a hundred. Profitable, permissible, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 23. You all know that. You can do the will of God, my brother, my sister, and, and it's, it's uh, permissible. But it's not profitable. And for you to know what is profitable in this season and not just permissible. You can do all your stuff. You can do your work. You can have the gifts. You can flow in the right way. And it's, it's the good will of God. But it's not the perfect and pleasing will of God. Are you with me? What you do is a good. You're doing a good work. It's, and what you do is okay. There's, it's not like you are sinning this and that and that. But the cutting edge lifestyle that God has for you. I'm not running into that. And for that... I need to understand how to work with the gifts, how to work with the fruit. That's really what I believe. So that that is established, and where that is established, then I'm getting into a place of profitable. Where it's really profitable, not just permissible. May God help you in that. So, if I first quickly go through with the gifts, and uh, this is before we start actually. Application. Application with that word. You must understand application in the, your life here. And that is the word of wisdom. Wisdom is how to apply the principles that I know. And we need to grow with all the gifts. Pursue the gifts, especially to prophesy. But we need to, and in this season more than ever, God could challenge us that we will pursue all the gifts. And otherwise circumstances are going to challenge you to pursue the gifts. And I'm talking about more than just speaking in tongues, interpretation about, hello, in that sense, word of knowledge, prophesy, those stuff. Great, 
especially to prophesy. But God's going to challenge us in so many of the other gifts also. Are you with me? Application. You need to understand the application of truth that you hear. When people are going to come together on Sundays, and when they come together in the cell group, when you come together, you and God, then suddenly the church will come to a place of just understanding how to apply what they hear. You bring a word on a Sunday, or you bring a word in the week, you pray, you read a scripture, and suddenly there will just be the supernatural application. You'll just know how to bring the supernatural application. That's what God wants to do. Be part of that. Information. There's a lot of information God wants to give to you. You know, okay, the word of knowledge. You, have, you had five husbands, the one that you have now is not your husband. That's information. You all know the word of knowledge and that it will be more and more revealed. But in the past, sometimes, you know, and not always, not at all, but so many times as church, we can become, or we are, we were, immature to know how to handle the gifts. Because with the gifts especially, the focus can so easily be on you. So easily, so easily, so easily. So if God can get a mature church that he can trust with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, where the people will not start to clap hands, you know, if he prays, or if she drives out the devil, or if he, or if that one. We must acknowledge the different gifts, but in the context of because we respect the body. Not because I know your gifting. No, I know the body of Christ. And how you serve in the gifting. And your serving must be 100% as that one serving doing the dishes. And in the same manner of honor. But that we could not yet distinguish the body of Christ in the right way. But that the churches, the flows, the different groups, more and more, they will come a maturity. Not threatened by one another. Not declaring how right we are and how wrong they are. That level of immaturity is going to go. It's going to go. Feel threatened by this one or feel this or feel that. Uh, God's going to help us in, and we believe that in Jesus' name. But in that context, is God wants to release the gifts. God wants to, through the Holy Spirit, release the gift. If the church is mature enough to handle it towards one another also. That's why Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, phew, in the middle of 12 and 14 with the gifts, hey? To say it means nothing if you are so immature that you don't understand love. So immature that you don't understand the core of the gospel, the core of your walk with Christ in a simplistic, beautiful way. If you don't understand that, you can sit and you have all this distinction in your spirit about that is that, that is that, that is that. Meanwhile, the gifts given to you became like a curse in your life. God's going to help you. He's going to help me. God, expect of me application. But God, expect of you supernatural application. That means he expects you to be open to the gift of wisdom. The word of wisdom. And then the word of knowledge. The nine gifts, the second gift. He expects you to flow in the gifts. It's a command. Pursue the gifts. It's a bigger command than walk in the gifts. It's a bigger command than apply the gifts. It's more intense. It's pursue. Put some holy aggression. Put some passion in it that you find a way. Find, how must I find a way to walk more with a, with a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, with this gift, with that gift? How must I find a way? Because there's a drive in me to walk and to Serve with the gifts of the Spirit. That is, if you obey the word that says, pursue the gifts. God's going to help. In Jesus' name. Information. God wants information to be, be shared. He wants to share information where the people say, where? Where did you get that? The world will say, where the hell did you get that? But the other people, and then they will know. That that person, that guy is connected somewhere. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, the focus must be he's connected with God.
He's connected with God. He's not this guru. Oh, are you with me? When I had that shame, as you all know, about the guy that committed suicide uh, three days before, I had to phone him, and all that stuff that happened at the end in the schools where the, where the headmaster would come to me and say, are you a seer? Because of you picked that one and that guy, and that was the biggest canola. And I could just say, it was my biggest shame turned into God's glory. Ah, no. When you can surrender everything, God can do so much. And in the area of shame, when I surrendered to God, certain gifts just started to flow intensely. Be open. It's not for how perfect I am, but may I pursue, may I obey His command that I'm supposed to pursue the gifts. I'm talking about all of us. Amen. You with me? Application, information, declaration. What was that one? Anybody? Faith. The gift of faith. My brother, my sister, we all have faith. We are saved by faith. Faith is a gift from God. Ephesians 2. God is pleased by faith. It's your faith that overcome the world. 1 John 5. We all that know the principles. What is the gift of faith? Is somewhat, at some moment, some supernatural supernatural, absolute supernatural declaration. If you have a certain faith to do and you've moved a certain mountain, it was not for the sake of the mountain to be removed. It's because God wanted to make a certain declaration. And if we can focus beyond the gift, for what is the purpose of that gift? So that supernatural faith is because you have a passion that there must be a declaration of God out there. The fear of God must come on the people. The people must start to have respect for God. We must have certain breakthroughs, but for what? Because you have a passion that it will be declared. God is the God of the nations. You keep that passion. You keep that attitude of humility. And God can trust you with the gifts. And the gifts will not become a curse. You will not lose your relationship with God because of the success with the gifts. Because you can have major success with the gifts. Hello? And the churches in the past, some of them are like we know, in decades and decades before, there are some amazing, amazing things that God did through certain people. But in the end time revival, as you all know, they're going to be an outpouring as they're going to be an outbursting of, to, for the manifestation of everything that's from hell. And the son of, what? The son of, yeah. Perdition. That guy, the devil, going to be revealed. What is coming from hell? Hell is going to pull out all his resources. But heaven is going to open up in that end time revival. And it will be all of hell against all of heaven. All of heaven through the church. All of hell through what the world can bring as tribulation. And for, but that all of hell out is going to work for the good. For those who love him. Because it will be for purification. And for the birth banks. For the birthing of the excellent bride of Christ. Prepared for the... Wedding of the Lamb. Amen, man. Yeah, demonstration. So you want to have a demonstration of who God really is. Therefore, you pursue the gift of faith. Next one. Elimination. What was that? Is it good? Thank you for that. My auntie can go there. Now I must go back because uh, is there any other one? But um, anybody? Um, ask you. So as we go, we uh, go one Corinthians twelve. You all know that part, hey? You all know that part. One Corinthians twelve. Okay, the one. Through the Spirit, wisdom, knowledge, faith, gift of 
healing. One, two, three, four. Demonstration. Declaration. The gift of faith. Demonstration. In your declaration, all that I'm saying is, in your declaration is a statement that have a certain impact. To have a certain impact. The disciples came to Jesus and said, uh, who sinned that this guy is sick? Jesus said, no, this is, this is not because he's sick, but, but this is because God wants to demonstrate his power. Because God wants to demonstrate who he really is. So if you can trust the Lord for healing, too many times we, we trust to have the faith for healing. Can we go beyond and say, we want to trust for the demonstration of God's power. The demonstration of his greatness. And that's why the gift is a, is a tool. Holy Spirit is giving us. Holy Spirit wants to put the focus on Jesus. So the gift is to put the focus on Jesus. The gift and the healing flow is for the focus on Jesus. To demonstrate who he is. It's not, first of all, for me to be healed. It's first of all because I have a passion, you have a passion, we trust the Lord, and I trust with you for a healing that you need. Because I have a passion, you have a passion, that God will be demonstrated in such a way also. Are you with me? And why some don't get healed? Like we're all saying with all the books, we actually don't really know. But you know, still, God, there can be a demonstration of who he is, the demonstration of courage, the demonstration of faithfulness, the demonstration. People who died with cancer, but they were so passionate. They knew the word. Man, they prayed every day intensely. They had this awesome, awesome relationship with God. There was a demonstration of who God is. Hello? Demonstration of the courage, of faithfulness in spite of, of, a, of a worship lifestyle that says, even though this, even though that, even though that, still I will worship you. Still I will praise you. Still I will. There's a demonstration. So in the midst of what the enemy meant for evil with sickness, if you have healing now or not healing now, how you walk out after the prayer for healing, how you walk out here, immediately can be a demonstration there's nothing that can hold you back to give a demonstration of who God is when we start to operate and allow the gifts to function you with me hallelujah that was gifts of healing another one miraculous powers miraculous powers what did we say? Illumination. Miraculous powers for the what? Miraculous powers that you can walk on the water and do this and, and tell the storm to be. It's to eliminate everything that can hold me back of doing God's will. It's not to demonstrate I can walk on water. Wow. Get out of the boat. You must get out of the boat and start to walk on water. So that what? Jesus can take hold of you and so that you can walk back into the boat. <laughs> You're going nowhere with the walking on water. Hello? So if it's just about the, this power, this how do you say, you say, miraculous powers. You don't pursue the miraculous power for the sake of the miraculous power. <sighs> you want to eliminate, and he said, where's your faith? He rebuked him about the lack of faith. Why? Because like we know, you know, when we preach about this, Jesus didn't want to get in the boat in the storm. He didn't. The scripture says he was passing them. He commanded them to go through the storm, he knew, to the other side. And he was on his way to pass them. And then he saw, and then he got into the boat. You with me? And then he rebuked them and he disciplined them because where's your faith? Why? Because with their faith he knew they would be able to deal with the storm. He doesn't need to get into the boat. He has equipped them in such a way that they can deal with the storm. God has equipped you in such a way that you will deal with the storm. But praise God for his grace. If we don't get it right, he will get into the boat. 
and he will do it. But he has the faith in us that we will know how to flow with the gifts, man. But for the sake of what? So that we can tell a storm to be still. No. So that we can eliminate the storms and the stuff so that we can get to the other side to do God's will. So that the guy among the graves can be saved and cities can be changed. For that sake. But too many times we it's like trusting just for the gift, trusting to walk on the water, trusting to calm the storm, trust. Mm -mm. What is the purpose of the gifts? The Holy Spirit work is not so that you can focus on the Holy Spirit's work. The Holy Spirit's work, as he, if you are working with the Holy Spirit, is to put the focus on Jesus. He will not speak of himself. He will speak only the words of Christ. He will not explain from himself. He will only explain the words of Jesus. If you want to do something really with the Holy Spirit, and not just with the gift of the Holy Spirit, you can go and walk with the gifts of the Spirit and not, work with the, not walk with the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? But if you want him as a person to be involved, the way that he wants to be involved, because more than anything else, he says, I'm with you. I'm with you. The fear. Fear not. Be strong. Be courageous. Because you are excellent in the gifts. Because the power just fall on people. Because thousands are healed when you speak. Therefore, be strong and courageous. No. Not because the gifts are with you. But because the person of the Holy Spirit is with you. That's why. Be strong and courageous. And you are commanded not to fear. Because if you, are, if you believe who he is, at least have the respect for him that you know. You, have no, you don't have the liberty to fear. You don't have the liberty to fear. It's not just a weakness where God sees your heart and accepts you with all your fears. He accepts you for who you are. He accepts me for who I am. But fear is a sin. And if I respect the presence of the spirit that he gave me, his spirit is not a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. Hey. So if you respect his presence, you better get rid of fear. Because it's a sin. To live in fear. It's missing the mark. To live in fear. But that is not in your performance. That is not in your level of faith. That is not how powerful this, the gifts can work through you. It is in the presence of the Holy Spirit. That you learn how to walk in his presence. And work with his presence. And enjoy his presence. And respect his presence. And commune with his presence. That that will be the most valuable for you here on earth. Before you will see him face to face. Before you see him face to face. The most valuable, the most valuable is his presence. If you see his presence, if you feel his presence, if you don't understand his presence. Doesn't matter what. You take it by faith. That you will respect his presence. Amen. This is supposed to be five minutes. It's your fault. Okay. Elimination. So, miraculous powers. Gift of miraculous powers. Everybody, powers to eliminate. Everybody say to eliminate. To eliminate every hindrance for you to do the will of the Father. That's why you must and you better. And you better be obedient to pursue that gift for the miraculous powers in the future. Because the church will be expected to do a lot of things, guys, in the future. And it will be unfair you don't have, I don't have the capacity and the ability to do it. But God will organize that we will not be able to do it unless we allow the gifts to work through us. You want to make sure that you can only do it through him. Only do it through him. <laughs> and that is purifying our lives. Okay, the next one. Acceleration. Elimination. Acceleration. We're talking about prophecy. No, I don't know. Acceleration. Acceleration prophecy. Why? Prophecy is to encourage. Get me the English. Exhort, encourage, and what's good? Comfort. For what? Just so that I can have comfort. Oh, I feel comforted. So, so that I can be encouraged. Encouraged for what? 
that I will accelerate. The guy running the race, I set on Jesus, author, finisher of his faith. The encouragement from the, from the cloud of witnesses. Hello? The encouragement is to accelerate into that what God has for you. It's not so that you, because you can prophesy excellently. If we have the uh, prophetic counseling, even with the ten questions, if you have with your day was, if you have, when you receive a prophecy, it's to encourage you to accelerate in that what God has for you. And you did not take the prophecy. You don't believe the prophecy that God gave. If you don't accelerate in what was given to you, you will the wall with a prophetic word. The scripture said, hey, huh? who's here when angels? You fight the, you, you wall the wall, you fight the fight with a prophetic word. Why? Because you need to accelerate. You cannot have these stuff in front of you. So my, my God will help me. He will help you that we will see this in the right prophetic light so that we can accelerate into his will. Accelerate. Because the church can hasten the coming of Christ. You remember that scripture? In the prophets? The church can hasten the coming of Christ if we can accelerate. Therefore, especially to prophesy, you cover the gifts. Especially to prophesy, you pursue the gifts. Because God wants us to accelerate into that what he has for our lives. This is for another day. But if I don't allow that acceleration, God will bring the frustration. You can write that with We didn't talk about that Sunday. But the frustration is now uh, Romans 8. Frustration. Because everybody's waiting, waiting, waiting. We cannot accelerate because everybody is waiting, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That will lead them into victory. That will lead them into acceleration to in inherit that what God has for them. Praise God for the frustration. If I understand it correctly. Not frustrated because my offering was not accepted and therefore I will kill my brother. Cain was able. Not that type of frustration. You need to identify through the Holy Spirit. What is this frustration in me? What is, is this from God? You don't fight God by fighting the frustration. But if it's not from God, you deal with that sin. You deal with that thing where that where enemy wants to come in and he wants to short circuit the whole thing in you. It can be the short circuit from hell. Or it can be this awesome grace of God that is bring, taking you back through the frustration into the place so that you rise up with stature, manifestation of the sons of God to liberate creation wherever you go, to liberate the business, to liberate the church, to liberate your leaders, to liberate your family, to liber bring liber liberation. You find such a word? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where you go, because the truth will set them free. Amen. Acceleration. Prophetic words for action. Please, guys, I wanted to give it to you because with Sunday, I, it, it smashed my mindset. Mindset. When God gave this to me, and I really believe, you must go and write down what is God saying to you about that. About that specific gift and that... Uh, one of the hundred purposes, it's not the ultimate word, of why God wants you to have that gift. Because it's not, uh, no, um, maybe God don't want me to accelerate with him. <clears throat> Therefore, he will not give me the word of, the, the gift of prophecy. He wants me to accelerate, finish with him into that what he has for my life. Are you with me? All right, acceleration. Identification. Next one. That's what? That's easy. Distinguishing between spirits. Distinguishing between spirits. We said there, I think the one example that we used was that lady that went behind Paul. Was it Paul? Oh, yeah. And see, these are men of God. You must listen to them. These are men of God. You must listen to them. That's perfect. Perfect. What they said was perfect. And this one day, he just couldn't take it anymore, and he cut, and he commanded the devil to get out of them, out of that lady. And then she didn't say that anymore. She didn't say anymore that they are men of God and you need to obey them. That's freaky. 
but had the capacity. And too many times, the churches are sitting with people where certain spirits are working in our churches. Guys, man. And we're not supposed to be critical of people. We're not supposed to judge people. But also the enemy can frustrate the work of God. Frustrate the thing in your physical family, in your business, in your church, in your, in your ministry. In that what you do, frustrate it. Because you don't operate through the gift of distinguishing what spirit is working. Through that awesome awesome wonderful lady with character servanthood laying down her life in the name of jesus <laughs> and meanwhile it's a different spirit and you are taken for a sucker taken for a right more and more the church is going to purify his army so that the right guys are rightly connected are you with me not because those guys have the best gifts. Those guys has the best music. Those guys, their preaching is there. These guys, you know where God has placed you? That's it. And that's where you stay. Because God said it. Even though you feel you want to slaughter those guys. But you better grow up and mature. To make the difference where God has planted you. Where God has placed you. Okay, oh, you're with one another. Okay, um, we're going to start with a session just now. All right, good. This thing is <laughs> speaking in different kinds of tongues. What that one? Communication. I know of many people that speak in different tongues. My my grandpa was one of them. We also said, but why cannot you use that word? Because grandpa is using that word. He said, my mom and dad. Because, Opa can swear, but all the rest we cannot swear. That's how I grew up. It's not that type of tongue. Okay. Speaking in different kinds of tongues, communication. My brother and my sister, your communication between you and God, sometimes it will be to worship Him in tongues, hey, from your spirit. Sometimes it will be a lot to align your spirit. Sometimes it is to. to let your mind shut up to become still. Become still and know that he's God. So let your spirit speak and don't let your mind have a chance to speak. Don't let your mind interrupt the, the voice of your spirit. So let your, the voice of your spirit dominate the conversation. That's why you better speak in tongues. That's why you better operate through this gift. But I know I'm also talking now about the devotional tongue. Hey, I'm also putting that in now, the devotional tongue. To align yourself in that sense, please. But the tongue in, in a congregation, unfortunately, like with the next one, communication and interpretation, the last one. Unfortunately, sometimes we, we get it a little bit wrong. Because with the tongue in the communication, it's me to God. And then the interpretation comes and then it's a prophecy. No, that is a different gift. That was not the interpretation of the tongue. And maybe the tongue was there... I don't know, because you know, sometimes there's a, a tongue, I know Vivian here, yeah, and we must get into that more. We are, we, are, we are wrong in that. Where God wants to give a specific tongue to bring a certain expectation of what we are supposed to pray. I want you, today, this congregation, to pray for Italy. And therefore, Holy Spirit give him a specific tongue. And if we have an expectant heart through a different gift, she will rise up and start to pray for Italy. That is if the gifts flow with tongues and the interpretation of tongues. Not tongues that are bypassed into the gift of prophecy. But the interpretation of tongues is still a prayer unto the Lord. But an absolute intercessory, most of the time, intercessory prayer of what's supposed to happen. Or well, somebody must stand up and he must stand up and he must start to pray and say, God, forgive us for slackness and this. Because in such a subtle way, God is saying that the church is slack. There's a slackness in the church. And suddenly you as pastor don't have to be the, the bad boy. Well, Holy Spirit helped you. And that, there's a tongue 
and in the interpretation. But sometimes, even you as a leader, when there's a tongue, if you, if you test this, you trust God, first of all, for the interpretation. So that there's a tongue, and then you come up, and you start to pray, and you trust God that you will pray exactly the interpretation. You pray that you will work, you will pray through the gifts of interpretation of tongue. Please, please, my brother, please, my sister. We Our prayer is supposed to become more pow, accurate. It's not this arrow is better. It's not that bow is better. It's not the aim is better. It's where you're aiming. It's the focus. And in that day, in today, Holy Spirit could lead. When sometimes we pray in a circle, a group, oh, let's pray for one another. Hmm. Or devils hoping that you will just see it as a tradition. Oh, we can trust God that you will have the exact prayer that must happen, and you focus on what you're supposed to pray. We have six people supposed to agree with you to pray exactly for that at this moment. It can be a game. It can be a religious game. Or it can be from a relationship where the focus of the prayer, the focus of the gifts, is so that there's an intense communication, communication and interpretation of that. There's a communication when Jesus says, eat my flesh and drink my blood. But there needs to come an interpretation of that communication between. So many times God will speak to you and you will speak to God. But God wants to you to bring interpretation. Are you with me? And with that in interpretation of the tongue, it's like God is teaching you how to pray. God is teaching you how to position yourself accurately. And through the gift and the interpretation of that tongue, you are learning how to come into that place of accuracy in your communication with Him. Okay. You, you have that night. You're going to go into that, please. Like, a very quick one. But it's all about, like, you all remember vitality and, and stability and identity. You remember? And the vitality is the love, driven by love and led by peace and, and uh, joy of the Lord as your strength. Amen? And stability through being faithful doesn't matter what to God. Have patience doesn't matter what. And a control that is not you in control, but God in control. There's the stability that Holy Spirit wants to work in you. And then the whole thing of quality. And I just remember with the quality, just remind me those three. Goodness, meekness, gentleness. No, gentleness is meekness, hey? Goodness, kindness, and gentleness. What was that? Goodness was? Who? Nobody has it here. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But in that, all of that, in that quality, you find the word integrity. When you allow Holy Spirit to work the fruit, when you say, that is a good person. You have said that about somebody. That's really a good person. But you cannot, you, you have not the other way of saying it. But in that fact of that person that is good, in that goodness, is saying, you have a certain identity that is from him. Because what he created was very good. When he looked at you and he said, very good. In that very good is the essence for the first time where God imparted identity to you. In your identity, I made you very good. Great and marvelous your works. God made you excellent. God made you very good. Let's say, God made me very good. If you want to tell somebody about your identity, that's the first thing you say. God made me very good. Because that was the first comment from God when he created you. Oh, okay. Goodness. Anybody want to give me someone else? Yeah, intensity. And that was what? Kindness was? And the intensity in your life is what? Kindness. That is a very intense person. 
But that intensity, that intenseness is many times rooted in stress or anxiety or this. That's a very intense person. That means you better back off. <laughs> but because that intensity has to do with being oversensitive or being feeling not in control as maybe a root of anger, a root of or of wounds, a lot of things in their lives. Intensity. But you know God's form of intensity is kindness. I've, I had a passion in my heart. That's why I've drawn you with intensity. Where's that? Jeremiah 31, 3. I've loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I've drawn you with my loving kindness. My kindness is the intensity. There wasn't a man with more kindness than the man Moses. The intensity that Moses had, that the intensity from heaven that worked in him, that gave him the capacity to take this whole nation from Egypt, shake all the demonic powers of that heathen nation, that the Everything is dealt with that, with that heathen nation and deal with all the rubbish in the nation of God. Hello? Seeing God face to face, communicate with him as a friend. That is a certain intensity. So look at the definition of intensity. Intensity, then you look at the life of Moses. Life of Moses. If that is a type of intensity, you will inherit the earth. Is the zachmoedige wat die aarde sal beherre? Is the? The meek that will inherit the earth. But with that, all I'm saying, oh, all that I'm saying is, please, my, my brother, my sister, we will give it to you. Sorry for this. But um, please look into this. I really believe Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit want to open it up for you. And if we can get beyond that point, that you can see the purpose of God, see the purpose of God through the gifts and the fruit, that we not so get stuck in the fruit and the gifts, that we never get beyond it to live the lifestyle, be the ambassadors for Christ. Because how many millions have turned their back on Christ because of the lifestyle of the church? Millions and millions. God help me, God help you. Amen. God will purify us. Remember what we said also 79 times. When you face your Goliath, the purpose is not to face the Goliath. Remember? The purpose is not to face Goliath. But because you have a passion in you for the glory of God. You have a passion for, for his name. How dare that uncircumcised Philistine come here and challenge the army of God. For his honor. He cannot challenge the mighty God. He cannot challenge the awesomeness of God. He cannot challenge that. He cannot challenge the awesomeness of God. He cannot challenge the, the choice of God. Through his people. How dare he come and do that. That's why I come to you. Not in the name of my faith. But in the name of the Lord. I don't identify with my faith, with my gifts, with my courage, with my all of that. I identify with the Lord. And I come to you in the name of the Lord. So the purpose was that his name must be glorified. Therefore, I deal with Goliath. Okay. So don't face your giant for the sake of slaying the giant. But you need to know the purpose beyond the slaying of the giant. Okay.